people, more life, more blessings. You know the vibes. We outside. Eric Buddy Davis, you know I'm here with my co-host. South Spit Fire. And we're feeling good, feeling great, feeling great, feeling good, and we hope you are too. Happy 2024, man. We at your door. Do it for the love, episode eight. I like to look at this year as the year of the black mama. You know, 24, Kobe Bryant, and then this is episode eight. I feel like it's very special to uh, just highlight that and let y'all know that this year we on y'all ass pause. All year we on the attack. All year we giving y'all content. Great conversation. Me and Sal do it for the love. Let's check our temperature, my brother. How you feeling? Well, before we talk about checking the temperature, okay. I had to add a comment to that Kobe uh, analogy because uh, Cat Williams definitely came out looking like Kobe. <laughs> so you're correct on that. But as far as my temperature, I'm doing good, man. Excited for this year. Thanks for the smiley on that. So we're doing, doing good this year and uh, excited for a lot of murals that I got coming up. You know, I talk about that every episode. So getting closer and closer to finalizing a couple proposals. So. Just plotting out this year, man, and uh, I'm enjoying the snow. This the last couple of days, been super back. relaxed. I'm pretty sure everybody feel like me when that snow out. Everybody want to get extra sleep, so right. getting a lot of extra rest. What about you? Man, I feel good. Shout out to the snow. I was that kid looking at WBAL growing up, staying up all night waiting to see if we were going to get off school, and half the time we didn't. <laughs> but uh, shout out to everybody that didn't have to go to school the other day. I feel good, bro. I have uh, two events coming up in February. I'm doing, actually, I'm really excited for um, the Good Black Men Dinner. Um, it's for first responders, and they've done their first annual last year, but this year they're combining men and women, first responders, so I think it's going to be a great celebration. You threw me the alley -oop. You know I'm getting uh, recognized right. there, so you know, right. I can't wait to go show up. Look know? out for your peoples. If you got an opportunity to put your peoples on, don't hesitate to do it. But I'm also, I'm doing a wedding reception the day after that. So um, I'm kicking off February strong, man, going into the month of love. Booked and busy. Booked and busy as we should be. that for 24. So let's get straight into it. Episode 8, you know how we do. Our first topic, we always say for the love of something. And tonight, our episode is about for the love of building. I know a lot of people, when you think of building, the first thing you may think of is the structure, a school, a hospital, something that has the design walls, a roof, windows. But when I think of building, I think of something like what we have here, the Do It For The Love podcast. I think of relationships. I think of friendships. It takes time. It takes effort to continuously work on something, see it through, and then executing that as you try to sustain a relationship or a structure. If you're into building, if you're into any type of creating on, that, on the side of designing. So tonight's conversation is about the love for building. How do you look at the love of building? Well, I definitely had, I got some notes down and okay. uh, definitely a few of the things that you mentioned. When I think about for the love of building, I think about connecting with like minds, all about one goal, you know, delegating responsibilities, committing action with a purpose, and you gotta produce results. So, you know, if it's something like that, that's building to me. Taking something from the ground up and making something that's everlasting that could stand the test of time. Sometimes building things, it, it might not come out with the, the goal that you intended with. And how do you tear down, destroy, and rebuild again? So that's what I think about when I think about building. Gotcha. When I, um, as I said already, when I think of building, I really like to focus on branding. Mm -hmm. And, um, Pretty much what we've done here, as I've said on previous episodes, we've known each other for years. Mm -hmm. But actually, when we locked in February 2023 to put this out into the world, it took real time. Mm -hmm. It was something that at first we wanted to rush and put it out there. It's crazy. We're coming up on the one year anniversary of when we're supposed to release it. Yeah. Um, Valentine's Day, as you know, being for the love, we thought it was the perfect time to throw it, to do it, and throw it out there. But we weren't ready. And uh, we saw that why rush a product that's worth it? Like, why rush something that, if it's going to be good in February, it should be good in March. It should be good in November. It should be good whenever you're ready to put it out to the people. Facts. So when I look at building, I really look at the fine, pretty much the details. Like, when you really, really are working with someone, and you're working with a studio, if you're working with a company, I work at the University of Maryland Dental School, that entire structure and how it's ran is something that started in 1940. So when they opened that building, they came from an older building that no longer could sustain or could hold up where they were trying to take it. They wanted to expand students, they wanted to expand teaching, they wanted to expand the levels of dentistry that they could teach. So sometimes, even when you build your natural structure, you got to see the big picture and know, maybe we got to revisit this, maybe we got to rebuild. So um, that's when I look at things, it's really about how I look at the time it takes yeah. and the detail it takes to building anything from a brand to a relationship. Yeah. Shoot, um, on the topic of what you said with branding and building, like I've come to learn the importance of building something. 
Okay. You know, my intentions when I started my business, when I was doing t-shirts and graphics, the intentions is to get clients for me and then, you know, make a lot of money. But as you grow and I have kids now, it's something that I could pass off to them. So I'm trying to, you know, keep something afloat, keep a good reputation. So now they can learn the hard work that I put into mm -hmm. it, the importance of it, and then they can also use it to bring in income. So gotcha. you know, it's all, all, a lot of good things about building. And I wanted to piggyback on something you just said before we move on. The love of building confidence, the love of building self-love, the love of building, you can take that word and apply it to so many different things because all of us aren't a complete project off the break. Some of us need extra motivation. We need tutoring. We need mentors. So sometimes you have to build up what you see. Kanye West was always confident, but all of the denial built up his self-belief. Like, I'm going to do this yeah, shit myself. Yeah, you had to slide him in there, didn't you? I mean, off camera, y'all trying to say that that's big sexy. So, you know, I, I had to just throw out the truth um, about my mans. But for real, at the end of the day, it takes a lot to get to where you're trying to go. And sometimes it takes someone just believing in you. So it's more than just the definition of a building structure or the definition of just building a relationship. Sometimes you have to build up yourself. It's just like Tetris and you could be a move away from breaking it all down. So uh, just stay confident, stay vigilant on what you do and who you are and where you're trying to take it. Because at the end of the day, nobody is going to believe in what you're building more than you, but never be too ashamed to look for help or some type of pick-me-up. And my last note on that, in reference to what you just said, building up something, mm -hmm. our last episode was about comedy, and we, I just spoke about Fast. Cat Williams. One of the reasons why he was mad at said is a joke that he talked about he built up to something, right? right? Building up a joke to knowing that you can see the anticipation in it, and then you, you know, hitting them with jokes that they wasn't expecting or punchlines in there, so... Building can be a metaphor for a lot of things, but again, it comes back to the importance of it. Because if you watch somebody tell you a joke, I bet that's some built up frustration. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> so, moving forward. Um, as we know, for all of our first time listeners, all of our new 2024 viewers and listeners, the way we run our show, after we do our topic, after we check our temperature, we like to move into our highlight sponsor. As we go into this year, this position will grow into people that would like to pay for sponsorship, love their brand to be highlighted on our show, we'll give you a time frame, we'll do contracts, and then you can be a part of the Do It For The Love family. But as of now, we just like to highlight people that we are motivated by and they are followers and subscribers of our show. So tonight, our highlight sponsor is no other than Whole Body Yoga Studio, which is located in Glen Burnie, Maryland at 319 Crane Highway. Um, the owner of Whole Body Studio is no other than Latoya Lewis. I'm sorry, Latoya <laughs> Neal. Wrong names. Um, <laughs> Latoya Neal is the owner of Whole Body Yoga Studio. She is a young lady that has been doing yoga, I would say, for the last five to ten years. And she started to really, really focus on youth and family yoga within the last year. And if you're ever interested, you can follow her on Instagram at Whole Body Yoga Studio, Whole H O L B O D Y Y O G A. And if you're interested, same thing for WholeBody.com hyphen in the middle. If you want to go to her website, book a session. She's always available. Anything you'd like to say about Whole Body Yoga Studio? You need to stretch, my brother. I was just very sad. I need some yoga in my life. <laughs> So if y'all got teaching for males, how to do a whole male class of yoga. For sure. Yeah. But um, at the end of the day, she focuses on beginner classes, and she wants to pretty much teach you all of the different things that you can gain from yoga. The breathing, the meditation, just becoming one with yourself. It's tranquility in that. So listen, if you're interested, Whole Body Yoga Studio, Latoya Neal, check her out. She's worth a while. Black-owned yoga studio. But at the end of the day, it's not about race. It's about the product, and she's worth your while. Keeping it moving. Let's go. You know Let's go. So, 2024, we at your door. Love to not love is another one of our segments where we like to highlight things that we don't say the H-A-T-E word on our show. We're anti that. So we say love to not love and saying love to H-A-T-E. So tonight, you want to go first? Always love to kick this, this uh, segment off. And my first love to not love is Anne Arundel County Public Schools. When it comes to making important but rash decisions that are guaranteed to be an inconvenience to your workday, trust in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And as you saw with the snow, 
they constantly doing us dirty, picking days of when they should, the kids should go to school and when they shouldn't. Right. And then a couple days prior, you letting them out for wind and rain. It's, it's just crazy, man. It's always a headache for us parents. So that's y'all. That's my first love tonight. Okay. My first love tonight, love. People telling other people how to love. Mm. I can't stand it. Mm. It's uh. It's almost like when you lack something, you're trying to tell some people how to do something that you haven't even figured out yet. I think that moving forward in 2024, can we start a trend? Focus on you. Let's love on the people that's supposed to love on you and the people that you're supposed to love on, which to me means your craft, your kids, your mom, your dad, your family. Everything else, let's add it on. If you choose to give that and extend that, that's totally up to you. But let's focus on loving on ourselves and, as we said, building people up. No more tearing down in 2024. Right. My, my last one for the Love to Not Love segment is the NFL script this year. Just how right, you know that was a, it was a, right. a Twitter thing that started, I don't know if it was last year or the year prior, where everybody said the NFL was rigged and they create this script to build all the way up into the Super Bowl. Facts. And it's just crazy how the playoffs have looked so far. You got no the colors. Man, you got Matt, Matt Stafford going against Jared Goff, where you know he would they had to be swapped out and Good job, Lions. You know, <laughs> Matt Stafford takes the L in his old city of Detroit. You got the Cowboys, who was arguably probably had their best team in the last 10 years. Facts. Fans all riled up, screaming Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Sorry. They get their ass kicked and, you know, put to the side. And the NFC just in general, we look terrible. You know, we command this fans, so we can't talk much, man. But we, I, I want to feel like we be trying to root for, our, you know, our division. Right. For some type of good turnout, but we always let each other down. We all on the couch. Yeah. And the NFL script. It, it's there again to prove us wrong, and I mean, but it's good. I'm, I'm hyped to see it, so that's why it's love to not love. Cowboys and Eagles, welcome home. Miss. <laughs> but um, my last love to not love is the promotion of violence. Mm. Once again, I want to just stick on building people up, man. Building each other up, building our neighborhoods up, building our schools up, building our people up, building our women up. I'm tired of seeing men violate women on social media in real life and making it like a it's sad that when you see it, and then when you read the comment section and see that everybody agrees with the actions. Mm -hmm. It's like we're living in a real, real dangerous time, and I feel like if we don't get grip of each other, that it's going to continue to slip. And we can't control adults or kids, to be honest. But at the same time, we can motivate, we can continue to push the right narrative. And in my mind, I'm going to build our people up all year long. I'm not going to fall off that pedestal. I'm going to stay high in the clouds and continue to motivate my brothers, my sisters of all creeds, all genders, so on and so forth. Okay. So. Stop the violence. Pray for all those that have lost people already in this year. And like I mentioned in our last episode, to combat gun violence, we having a gun violence prevention weekend coming up March 9th through the 10th. Yes. We're still finalizing details, so it's not official, but once you see those flyers go out, we're looking to have different celebrities like Wallo, who we've invited, Bow Wow, a cool. uh, whole bunch of people from, from social celebrities, uh, social media influencers, people to come out and just share their different knowledge of social uh i mean activism as it pertains to gun violence we've also invited a couple nonprofits from baltimore who've already done initiatives in that city to see what they're doing and what's worked and what hasn't so i think it's going to be a huge event for like minds to come together and we all try to come up with a solution i, I don't think we could kill it overnight but right. you know we just got to tap into the youth and, and see if we can get them on the right path gotcha and i also want to uh, send a special shout out to corinne nickel i'm also doing an event with her in june for moms against gun violence um, I did that event last year, so this is the second annual, and um, it's a great event. You got different vendors from all over the city, and then you also got moms that have actually dealt with losing their sons to either gun violence or they're the person that pulled the trigger. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a tough thing to deal with as any mom or father. So uh, we're going to continue, like I said, all year long. We're going to build up our people, and we're going to speak the truth, and we're going to try to push all of these initiatives to the front. So moving forward past that. Going into uh, Shine the Light Series. Shine the Light Series. Now, this one is special for me. Um, in prior episodes, we spoke on autism, but it was more about a reflection of a question. Tonight, I want to shine the spotlight on Autism Support and Awareness Instagram and Facebook page. Um, for those who know me and those who have listened before, my 16 year old son, Donovan, nonverbal, level three autistic, autism on the spectrum. And over the break, I posted a video in June of last year um, of actually I wanted to show my hair. I had just got it done and I thought I was looking good. And then my son attacked me, man video. 
I played it off like it was cool. I thought it was going to be a quick one and done. And then he doubled back. And everybody watching could probably see how aggressive I got. And it was actually a teaching lesson and a tool right on camera. We did breathing. He calmed down. And then we just went off camera. And six months later, this Autism Support and Awareness page reposted me. They have about 250,000 followers, followed by many people in the autism community. And since that day, I have touched and helped so many families. And it's all because they threw me that oop. They didn't have to repost me. And then since that day, they reposted two more of my videos. And then on top of that, who I like to call the queen of autism advocacy, Holly Robinson Pete, who is the wife of, um, I'm sorry, uh, ex-Philadelphia Eagle, Rodney Pete, she reposted me. First, her fan page reposted me. I'm sorry, not her fan. Well, you can say it's her fan page, but pretty much her fundraising donation page. And then her page, she has 1.1 million followers. When I say this has changed my autism family and community, like every day I'm getting 50 to 100 followers. Every day my inbox is filled. The family's looking at me like I'm some guru. And all I ever do is just show my life and my day-to-day. -day. I don't have, I know y'all probably think I do, I don't have the answers. Donovan, I would love to be like, yeah, I snapped my fingers and he was drinking water. For 10 years, he drank Snapple Apple and Well Done Chick-fil-A Nuggets. One day he woke up and was on an alkaline diet. Lie to you not. One day he woke up and no longer shit on himself. No longer pissed on himself. For years, I woke up to the smell of shit, thinking like, what the fuck is going on? And he's in the room loving it. And now, he uses a whole pack of wipes because he don't want nothing on him at all. So I say that to say, stay patient, stay loving, stay researching, stay caring. It's not an overnight answer, but the answer is to never give up on your child. And I just wanted to thank them for showing me that love. I'm going to continue to be an advocate. I'm going to continue to push your page because what you've done for me, I hope to continue to do for other people. You deserve the spotlight. My whole autism community, special need community, anybody dealing with disabilities, this episode is also dedicated for you. I'm going to continue to build up the advocacy and the knowledge that's, take, that's needed for everyday people to know how to deal with us because we're everywhere and we just like y'all. We don't, we don't deserve to be stuck in a house. We don't deserve to not have our kids have interactions. But it's tough when the world doesn't understand you. So once again, thank you to everybody that understands our lifestyle. For sure. And shout out to you, man, because I feel like parents of regular children can learn from parents of oh, yeah. with autism from the patients. There's been times that Buddy's been around me when I'm saying things to my son, whether it be at a basketball game or in the house, and it's a lot of his uh, wisdom that he kicked to me that helps out. So, Absolutely. you know, we can all learn, for, learn from each other. For sure. And I got to show the love to the typical developing parents as well, because I always tell people parenting is a hard job, special needs or not. I know a lot of people look at me as like a superhero, but we're all superheroes. If you're there for your child, you are Superman or Superwoman to them. You best believe it. But cool. we shine the spotlight. We love to not love. We have our sponsor highlight. I think it's time for our very first guest of 2024. Cool. Episode 8, you got something special coming your way. Do it for the love. Episode 8, we are back. And as you see, and you know, we're normally beautiful, but the set looks a little different. You know, a little more beautiful than what it normally looks. We have our first guest of the year, but not only our first guest of the year, our first woman guest of the Do It For The Love podcast ever. i like to introduce, they call her Nikki the Realtor, but we have Miss Nikki Cooper. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Welcome thank to the you. show. Thank you. We've been needing some other energy up here other than masculine energy. We need another voice. The people got to hear woman's side of life, entrepreneurship, everything. Relationship advice, everything. We can't just have a male-dominated opinion on the show. So thank you for your time. We appreciate you for being here. Thank you for having me. No problem. And just a little, little, quick little, before I let her say it herself, she is a Bowie State graduate. She is a mother. She is the CEO <laughs> of Coop Development mm -hmm. and much more. So we normally start off our show with the who, what, when, where. So let's just get right into it. Who is Nikki Cooper? <laughs> well, I think you kind of summed up most of it. Okay, okay. I'll try. <laughs> so I am a Baltimore native. Okay. I'm born and raised in a small community, Cherry Hill. Okay. Well known community. Well known. <laughs> Cherry Hill doing big things. So <laughs> gotta love it. Shout out to all my family and friends when Cherry Hill born and raised. Cherry Hill. Um, school, elementary, 
uh, high school, I was there. Um, later on in life, I went to uh, Bowie State University, okay. which I graduated from Southside Academy, which was a small uh, charter school in Charlie Hill. Okay. Um, so graduated in 2003, went to Bowie State University um, and majored in, a, um, in broadcast journalism. Nice. Received my bachelor's um, with a broadcast journalism degree. Okay with a minor in uh, journalism. Um, so graduated in 08 and then, you know, I came to, uh, it's funny, I came to the uh, Maryland State Lottery. That's the question I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's okay. Hold on, so, public relations, so how was that? Yeah, okay, so originally when I went to Bowie, my whole idea was to be this big, um, you know, news reporter, you know, like a Oprah, and I just wanted to just kind of work in some of the big stations, Channel 11, WBAL, um, just to kind of get my feet wet in, in the industry. And I actually interned at uh, WJZ and WBAL. Okay. Um, at the news assignment desk. Okay. Um, and then uh, a few years later, I interned at the Merle State Lottery. Oh. And there I worked as a drawings official. Okay. So um, a lot of people may not know this, but um, I was the one on TV who was drawing the numbers on live on TV. I was going to say, does that sound like what it is? Like the balls out of the day? Yes. Okay. And, and as many people as they say, oh, it's a math to it, it's a science to it, it really is not. Okay. Um, if you would know the things that we do prior to mm -hmm. a drawing, you'd be like, okay, yeah, this is definitely something that is not set up. Um, but, you know, it was fun. Yeah. I was, what, maybe early 20s doing it. Um, but that was just a part-time thing that I was doing. Um, yeah. But, you know, full-time, I was working in the um, public relations department, and which was kind of cool because I had an opportunity to interview um, lottery winners and just hearing their stories, people, um, whether young or old, uh, coming across this luck, per se, and they just have a winning scratch off, or they won the Powerball, the Mega Millions, and I'm sitting there jotting down all the information, just wishing I was on that other side of the table. Yeah. And then I would do this nice press release that would be online. Okay. Um, so, public relations, and I also got into video editing, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah, so I was doing some video editing, editing for um, the Maryland State Lottery. Um, I kind of mastered the craft, uh, that craft actually in uh, Bowie because at Bowie we learned how to edit our own news packages. Mm -hmm. um, so I learned a lot of software like Final Cut Pro, the Adobe Suite and so forth. So when I came to the Maryland State Lottery, not only did they uh, send me for training courses, they also provided me with all the equipment that I needed to actually do production for them as well. Um, you already had a background in it. So yes, gotcha. yes. And that makes a more mm -hmm. self-sufficient journalist, right? Because yes. I've done a, quite a few interviews and what I've noticed from earlier to now, a lot of journalists are tra traveling by themselves. They're carrying a the camera. They got yep. their own mics. They're doing everything. Yeah. See, the thing is, when you're first starting out as a reporter, mm -hmm. you're not going from, you know, school, uh, straight out of school to WBAL or some of the large mm -hmm. network stations. They're sending you to the hick town and Eastern Shore. Mm. There is no large crew that's doing your video editing and carrying your equipment. That it's just you. It's just you. Right. Not only do you have to know how to shoot, you got to know how to white balance and everything. You also have to get back to the station and know how to edit mm. your own footage. She's talking that language <laughs> that the art school students and video school students only know about. Yeah. It's crazy because I once had that dream, but I did not know all that went into it. Even when you would see like behind the scenes footage on Instagram, mm -hmm. like the funny bloopers, mm -hmm. it's people that's like, they're doing everything. Yes. But you wouldn't see that until the camera stopped rolling. You see the like, God damn, like there's not really many people out there. One person on the camera and the person with the mic. Yeah. And that's it. Yep. And, so, um, and you're not and you're not behind, you know, the news desk. Right. You know, you're out there in the weather with and when it's pouring down raining or if the there's trenches. a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, in the trenches, like you don't sit behind that desk until years in. You know, right. people that are here, they've yeah. been there for years. Yeah. You're fresh out of college. Okay. Oh no, you're out in the streets. That's you know cool. what I mean? Doing that's your cool. own thing. So but great learning experience. I can't take it back. Um, and it prepared me for everything that I had in life. So, um, you know, so of course, public relations with the Maryland State Lottery, I was there for about six years. Okay. Um, and from there, I then went to Baltimore City Housing. Mm -hmm. And you probably will say, oh, how'd you go from, you know, public affairs to housing? Well, I was a hired as a neighborhood development officer. So I had a marketing background. Okay. Um, so my marketing background included communications. Um, I had a, you know, of course, my journalism degree. So I did a lot of writing. 
Um, but marketing was something that I've always had that skill. Um, more so um, uh, talking to people, um, teaching people, um, working with others and so forth um, to either deliver a message, get a point across, or even just um, for people to learn from me in any kind of way. Um, so I kind of stuck with that and when I went to uh, Baltimore City Housing, I started working with a lot of community organizations. From there, I started also working with developers, investors looking to invest in our urban cities in, uh, in Baltimore. Okay. Um, so when they came to, uh, well we had some people who were from out of state, of course you had New York, Virginia, and then you have a lot of people, believe it or not, from DC looking to invest in Baltimore. Um, reason being, you know, if anybody knows, DC is very, very expensive to live in. So we had people who would, uh, you know, commute, work in DC, but live in Baltimore and get on the Mark train and travel back and forth because it's too expensive to even stay there. Makes sense. So they would buy their home here and then travel to DC to work, which made sense, of course. Um, so I work with people like that. Um, and then I also work with young entrepreneurs. Um, I love seeing our young black entrepreneurs coming in saying, hey, I want to learn how to purchase city-owned properties and things like that. I loved it and I love working one-on-one -on -one with investors and developers like that. Just trying to develop the skill. I've gained so many relationships, networking. Um, I've also um, gained a lot of community relationships that also helped me with, um, you know, uh, learning what the people of Baltimore want. You know, people that are living in these communities. Now granted, yes, I come from Cherry Hill, but also, you know, it's more, it's larger than just Cherry Hill. It's Baltimore, Baltimore that needs that love. Baltimore. You have a lot of abandoned buildings, you have a lot of crime, and it's still an issue to this day. Mm -hmm. um, but believe it or not, DC at one point was very vacant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was where you could actually buy something and actually, you know, um, yeah, benefit from it because um, now the price in DC has more than tripled. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it, they had vacants at one time. Mm -hmm. And I see Baltimore as being that place in the future. You know what I mean? Where we're actually coming in and it's like, wow, you can't. I remember these abandoned buildings, you know, West Baltimore Absolutely. over here. And now you can't even buy anything. Right. You know, um, but. I, I see Baltimore as being that place. It's crazy you say that. I've been working in Baltimore since 2016, and it doesn't even look like the same city it looked like then, at least to me, from when I started at the dental school to now, just how they're building up the front of the city. When I started, the casino was there. Now you got Top Golf. Now they got the live music they mm -hmm. coming. The, the arena mm -hmm. is bringing in the same people that's going into DC. Yeah. So um, I see that, and it's crazy that DC's thinking about losing their team and Baltimore was down on the up. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll still have that base mm -hmm. because of what the city's growing into. So I think um, Baltimore I sometimes gets so much press for crime that it overshadows the growth that they have in other areas. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, mm -hmm. you can, like you spoke about the growth of Baltimore when you're looking at the casino and all of the other things around here. And even with the nonprofits, like mm -hmm. I've done work here, so many nonprofits doing good all throughout the different zip codes. But again, the crime just overshadows that. But if you look at cities like Baltimore and Detroit with the same amount of crime, but go and look at Detroit and see how much infrastructure they've mm -hmm. went back and built. It's not even close to what Baltimore has done. So we appreciate people like you putting in that behind the scenes work that people don't actually get to see as making cities like Baltimore great. Yeah. My uh, first question was, who is Nikki outside of business ventures and real estate? What's your personal life? Oh, my personal life. Um, so I have three girls. Mm -hmm. okay. um, beautiful girl. Girl mom. Yes. Girl mom. Girl. I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I was praying for a boy and it was just like, girl, girl, girl. I was like, you know what? God. I, like, I, I got it. Girl. Really? <laughs> you know, they gonna take care of me. Some of them at home. You, you know what? My friend says the same thing. She says the same thing because she has all boys. So mm -hmm. I get it. But I love my girls to death. Um, my girls are um, 15, 
um, nine and five. And in the sports, right? They are. So my oldest is running track now. Okay, track sport. Uh, yes. Um, she, it, it was a little bit like pulling teeth because she was a girly girl and she wasn't really into the whole sports thing. Okay. And I was like, well, dang, your mama used to play this, basketball, volleyball, soccer. And she just, you know, would be cute. But, um, you know, with my girls, you know, I'm very, very strict on academics. Okay. Um, and I try to get them involved as much as possible, um, you know, into sports or even, you know, social events, um, just to kind of keep them well-rounded. Mm -hmm. um, my two youngest play soccer. Um, my oldest, um, as she was growing up, she was doing a lot of dance. Um, so a lot of ballet and jazz and, you know, that type of dancing and everything. So, um, and then my youngest, Kennedy, um, she's five. You. Thank you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> She's my swimmer. She's been swimming since she's been two, two years old. Um, so she's involved in that. So yes, I'm, I'm a girl mom. Okay. Um, but outside of that, um, you know, I'm Nikki. I am. I, I, I would consider myself a well-rounded individual. You know, I'm someone that you can, you know, if you wanted to take to a professional networking event, you know, I can go there, do my thing, you know, meet people. And go home, you know. And then you have Nikki that is, let's just say, you know, if you want to take on vacation. Nikki Chantel. Okay, yes, Nikki Chantel. <laughs> so Nikki Chantel is um, the friend that if you want to go away, you know, I'm the type like, hey, hey, girl, let's go jump off that that cliff. And I'm a big water person. Let me just okay. say that. So if there is a clear blue sea, I'm jumping in it. If it's a boat, I'm jumping. Um, I I do know how to swim. Which is why I, you know, have my girls in swim lessons. Respectful. I love the women that's going uh, out the country, that's going to Jamaica, it's a different spot with this beautiful water. Y'all at least take some type of swimming lessons. Yes. Y'all get ready to drown and embarrass me. Yes, <laughs> yes. They ready to die on that white vessel. They be like struggling out there on the beach. But shout and, out to them. And any of my friends know, if we're going on vacation, Nikki has an itinerary. Yes, I do. I'm that friend that says, hey, you know, who's going? Mm -hmm. Here are the prices. This is where we're staying. Day one, we're doing X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. This is the prices. Y'all let me know what y'all want to do. Either go or you don't. I'm going to present all the information to you. We're going to go from there. You can follow the itinerary. You can do your own thing. Either way, I'm just so, like, go with the flow. Speaking I'm, my language. Yes. I'm just very chill, laid back. I believe in, you know, hey, you guys, you want to do what we want to do. If you want to do your own thing, I'm totally fine with that. No issue. Drama free. I like to have fun. Um, and just enjoy ourselves, you know, because it's always a good time. You only live once, and I'm that friend that you want to take and just share memories with. And oh, we're right. definitely gonna take a million photos. Oh my god! <laughs> she sound like my. Listen, she sound like me. Itineraries, man, gotta stick to it. But we yeah, gonna do something. I like yeah. to take photos. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna find a nice resort okay. that's you know to our liking because you know we're not just staying anywhere, and you know we're gonna have a good time. Right. You know, memories last a lifetime. So what's your sign? I'm a Virgo. Okay. Big okay. Virgo. All right. Big, 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 big. August? <laughs> September. Okay. 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 September 6th to be exact. So, yeah. Okay. So, I'll move into my next question. I'm okay. going to say, what is it that people can look for when it's time to buy or go into, like, the more of a real estate question. Okay. Like, what is it that people, or somebody that wants to become, like you said earlier, a person that wants to buy into something or a person that wants to rebuild um, something in the neighborhood or buy a vacant. What is it that they can look for to step into that? So a couple of different things that you can look for. I always recommend, please, if you can, get a mentor. Get a mentor who has gone through the process that can show you the ups and downs. Who can tell you about the ups and downs and kind of walk you through the process. I cannot stress that enough. Um, take advantage of workshops. They are out there. They are free. Um, most of them are free. Um, I've even taught a couple of workshops on how to buy city-owned property. How long did these, what's the duration of time that you would spend at a workshop? I would spend about an hour and a half. Okay. 
Um, Cause usually I do a presentation and that's about 45 minutes and then there's questions and so forth. I only ask um, cause black people, we always want to know how long something is. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's very straight to the point. Um, the workshops that I do um, teaches you step by step what to look for. And you know, that also brings me to another part of business side that I do, which is consulting. Okay. Um, so a lot of times people come and they say, hey, I'm new to Baltimore, I'm not from here, or I don't know the city that well, I'm in the county, where should I invest? That's where I would come in and say, hey, this area is a good area, this is up and coming, I know what projects are coming, I know what's, um, you know, what money is invested, what city dollars are invested, this makes sense for you. So you're yeah. talking about, you said invest, so we ain't even talking about home buyers, we're talking about commercial buyers or? Well, uh, well, I'm, I'm more so speaking of investment okay. properties. Okay. Um, and, and, and for our home buyers, there's some tips as well, but okay. for right now, just for our investors, um, knowing where to purchase, mm -hmm. making sure that you are looking at everything we're purchasing, make sure that's a good investment, because the last thing you want to do is to jump out there and invest in an area that is not going to do well or do as what you expected right. per se. Um, you definitely want to work with a realtor who can actually run numbers whether you're doing a rental even if you're planning to sell. Seeing what makes sense um, or what time of the year makes sense to sell. Does it make sense to sell right away or maybe you should hold it and rent it. Um, whether you're doing market, market rate rental or whether you're doing um, Subsidy um, or subsidized rental is to you know totally fine. It just depends. Every every situation is different. Um, and for my home buyers, of course, you want to take advantage of the home buyer workshops. Um, set goals for yourself. Um, if you're uh, meeting with a uh, home buying counselor or someone who can actually uh, fix uh, credit repair, that's always a plus because all of these are going to play a part in you purchasing um, a home. Right. You know what I mean. Um, start thinking about down payment money, how much you're looking to spend. But actually, and believe it or not, there's so many home buying programs out there where I had a client, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> so I have, I'm also a realtor with Keller Williams uh, mm -hmm. flagship, which is in Millersville. Mm -hmm. I had a client who only had to come to the table with $7,000. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, people have this conception that I got to come to the table and drop 25000 right. 30000 on the top. No, you do not. And there's so many programs out there that you can take advantage of that people don't know about. So get with your lender, get with your realtor, find out what's out there. Just don't, you know, just don't assume. And that's the thing that I can't stress the most. People assume that, oh, the buying home buying process is strenuous. You know, it's time consuming. I'm going to be stressed out. But nothing is easy. You know, if it's too easy, you know, it's unbelievable. You know what I mean? So it's definitely going to be some work. But you have to have, one, the patience, mm -hmm. the dedication um, to stick to it and actually um, move towards your goals and fulfill those goals. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Appreciate just, that. you know, Thank you. different words. Of advice. And shout out to Glenn, man. Um, you know, that's somebody from my town in Annapolis, Maryland, that's always buying up different vacants in different communities in Baltimore. But I asked her that question because a lot of people think it's just like, oh, you go build it. you. You know, you go no. buy it, you rebuild it, you <laughs> sell it, or you rent it to a low-income family, you do public housing, no, it's but it's not that simple, so no, I'm happy that not. you broke it down for it's you. No, it, it's, very, it, it's, it's a long process, mm -hmm. um, and you, it takes time to master the skill. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're not just jumping out there and just saying, oh, I'm going to just renovate this and that's it. No, it's a lot. Finding reliable contractors mm -hmm. is a big thing. Yeah. You know, and when you're a woman, that's also mm -hmm. um, something that you really have to make note of because, you know, some people will take advantage of you. This game is cutthroat, mm -hmm. you know, this housing game. They do not care. Mm -hmm. They will take your deposit and say, hey, I'm going to start work on Monday and not show up. Money gone. Mm -hmm. Contacts gone. You can't get through. Yeah. They will try to play with you. And it's not just females, men too, but you got to learn the business. you got to develop a team that can get you through point A all the way to Z. Mm -hmm. And um, just learning to, and not only that, trusting your team at that, you know, once you build that relationship, continue to um, flourish on that relationship. Continue to use the same people if you can. You know, keep it consistent. Right. Trying to get this person that you know or that person, or you get people who are not licensed, mm -hmm. who will get you in more hot water because guess what? You need a use of occupancy permits once, you're, uh, once you've completed your rehab. Yeah. If you haven't pulled those permits, Baltimore City's gonna say, hey, 
um, open that wall up. We didn't see, what's this going to? We haven't checked the, checked the electrical, you don't have a permit for that. Open this floor up and it's gonna cost you more money to do that than actually going through the right way. So do it, do your research. You don't have to always, you know, oh, uncle so-and-so or, you know. I oh, do you like fishes. Yeah, boo-boo down the street. Oh, he can do that. No, let's get some yeah, licensed quality. people, quality work. And the last thing you want is want a lawsuit. <laughs> Definitely is something that you um, yeah. definitely want to avoid and you know, just keep it professional and clean. Believe me, it's worth it in that. Right. Yeah. Right. I actually went through that with uh, a mural that I painted inside of a rental property that a, a female was running. She reached out to me to do a mural inside of it. But as I was there for that week painting the mural, I saw some of the issues that she was going through with some of the men contractors that she had at the house. And they were also Spanish. So when it came to her issues and some of the things that she didn't like, they, they started to play the all know English mm -hmm. thing. And, mm -hmm. and then they sent in relatives to come and fix parts that somebody mm -hmm. else messed up. It just got real tricky. And I was able to see that from the outside looking in. Gotcha. And then also following up on um, a statement that you said about just women being in the business, um, that actually went right into my next question. Mm -hmm. What are some of the advantages that there are for women realtors from your POV, your point of view? Um, with women realtors, it, it, I would say that one of the great advantages is that um, some of my clientele, they feel, may feel more comfortable with working with women. Um, we're very um, nurturing um, for those who have kids. Um, we're someone that you can easily talk to, relate to, um, and I'm more than just your realtor, you know what I'm saying? I'm the person, like, even if you're having a personal issue, maybe you're having a finance issue, you can call me and it can be, one, confidential is my number one priority, and two, trying to come up with a resolution, you know? Because sometimes people may be ashamed or, you know, they feel very um, doubtful um, if things don't go according to plan. You know, you get almost at the closing table and then you find out, oh, this came up on my credit. I done bought something I wasn't supposed to buy and they're not comfortable. Sometimes they won't even tell their realtor until they almost at the, ta at the table and then the lender calls you and say, hey, we can't close. Your client has purchased this or this came up on their report. Red flags. Yeah, all red flags. And, you know, just having that relationship and being open and um, just knowing that, you know, I am one, a woman first. You know, and two, I understand that we all go through things, we all have issues, and you can talk to me, you can relate to me, you know what I mean? Um, so, and you know, as women, you know, of course we're relatable, um, but besides that, um, you know, I, I can only speak, I can't speak for um, just the gender in general, I can only really speak on myself. So, I can't. sometimes it seems like. <laughs> Oh, I say like the women in the industry be selling more houses than the men. Well, I don't know. That's now keep saying. in mind, real estate is a popularity contest. Oh, believe it, it doesn't matter how many books you read, how long you've been in school. Real estate is a popularity Clients contest. Clients coming to you. Oh, right. Yes. You know yes. So, so, so go ahead. Now, what's your opinion on that one realtor that went viral? I think it was sometime last year that was given every client that bought a house. It was some Louis Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. you on that? Um, it, it, no, they was no, real. No, they were real. Hey, I didn't keep up with But guess show. what? Set. It works for him. But you know why? Because he's selling multi million dollar houses. Okay. You know, if I had multi million dollar clients, it's nothing for me to buy a little bag. You get a bag, you get a bag, you get a bag. You know, get a bag. that's the client. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the clientele I have. And hey, it works for him. You know, and, and guess what? It went viral. Yeah. And, and guess sure. what? And when people think of real estate, I need a multi million dollar home. I'm getting the guy with the Louis bag. Right. I get the kind I'm looking for his house. Yeah. Everybody yeah. say when you buy that house, you're spending all your money, you kind of feel broke afterwards, but at least you come out with a Louis bag. Yup, yeah, you come out with a Louis bag. Yeah, <laughs> no oh, furniture, so. no furniture, no clothes, but you're not a purse, baby. Yeah, I, so I cannot knock anybody's hustle. Um, and like I said, it's a popularity, it's all a marketing, getting yourself out there. If the thing is, when people think of real estate and they think of you, that's the key. I always wonder when you, you know, I see some of these realtors promoting some of these beautiful homes. When they have all of that stuff inside, are you buying that too, or is that just stuff? No, no. Is there a way that you can that somebody ever said like, I want all of the furniture that y'all got in here already? Oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of times we do uh, staging, mm -hmm. 
And that's where we pay a third party to come and stage the home or whatever the case may be. Um, and sometimes you get people who say, oh, I, I want the furniture too. So I sold a property um, near Morgan. And my client purchased the house, but they had it staged so nicely. Like I'm talking, you know, uh, the nice tables with the sh with the sets and the chairs and dining room table all. Like you can tell, this guy has definitely he was a developer, so Trust he's he yeah, so he's done this plenty of times. This wasn't just somebody just selling their home. This was a developer. She um, was able to connect with that developer and say, hey. I love the furniture. How do you feel about selling it? Mm -hmm. And he gave it to her for a, a very discount rate. Because um, that's something that he's probably used in a yeah, thousand Yeah, a lot of times people just use it to stage when people come to look inside of the home, um, when they want to get photos done and things like that to entice people to come look at the property. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they do it all the time. And it's nothing for them to go out and buy the same thing <laughs> or you know go out and, bought and buy more furniture because they do this over and over again. Gotcha. Yeah. I have one more question for you out of the you know, who, what, when, where, why, mm -hmm. and some may have one more before we go into our next segment. Mm -hmm. Coming from Sherry Hill, mm -hmm. when did you realize that it was more to the world than your street, Baltimore City? Like, when did you, like, what was the moment? Not saying the realtor part, not saying mm -hmm. the college part, Bowie State. What was the moment, just growing up in Sherry Hill, that you was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta do more. And not like, I gotta do more and get out of here, I gotta do more and come back here, or stay here, or build here. Uh, what, if there was a moment, it could be an overall combination of just what you went through after college, the lottery and everything, but if there was a moment while you were living there in your upbringing, what would mm -hmm. it be? So, where I grew up in Cherry Hill, um, my parents owned their home. Okay. Now, when people think of Cherry Hill, they think, oh, it's the slums, and you think Section 8 housing and so forth. That's not the case with the entire Cherry Hill. Talk to them. Um, so my parents, um, I would say, would be more so middle class. My father uh, was a firefighter. My mom, a graduate from Morgan State University, and she also worked for the state of Maryland. Okay. So we live relatively um, pretty decent. Uh, we had a nice home. At that time, I think the, our house was maybe 80, maybe 80, 90,000 at the time. This is back, I was born in 1985, so they probably purchased that right in the, in the 80s at the time. So it was very cheap. Mm -hmm. um, once you left my block, I lived on Deacon Hill Court, which is a cul-de-sac um, um, in Cherry Hill. Mm -hmm. Once you left that block and you went further, you know, up the street or down the hill, you know, you have the um, public housing areas. Um, and that's the areas with people that I went to school with. Right. You know, you would never think it because, you know, some some of them dress nice, some of them not so much nice. You know, they um, didn't have the means to buy the latest and greatest. Mm -hmm. And I have older parents, so they didn't lace me with the the newest and everything. My parents were old school, like, look, you gonna wear this until this is, you know, you know, until you can't wear this anymore. They watch the money. They would just watch Oh, and my, my father, he is definitely a penny pincher, and this is probably why he is, you know, the way that he is, and he's, and you know, he's a very successful, um, and, you know, he has money, he knows how to save, um, which is definitely great in, in our black community, but anyway, um, so living Outside of my cul-de-sac in Cherry Hill, um, I've had the opportunity to not only interact with people who lived in low income, but go to school. Um, you know, I was in sports with uh, people out there. Um, you know, I went to the rec centers. I was um, very involved. And the things that I saw growing up, whether it was crime, you know, uh, drug dealers on the corners, mm -hmm. not feeling safe. You know, my parents didn't let me go, but so far mm -hmm. from where I lived at. And just seeing, you know, our young black people, there are people that I actually went to high school with who are no longer here, mm -hmm. you know, who were victims to gun violence, gotcha. who um, got addicted to drugs early that you would never think, you know. And during that time, you know, I knew there was more than what it was at that moment. Yeah, just me living in Cherry Hill. It was much more to life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when 
I had the opportunity to choose, okay, do I want to go to Morgan, Towson, or Bowie? I was like, nah, you know, I felt like everybody was going to Morgan. And I love Morgan State, definitely a prestige um, HBCU. Shout out to um, Morgan. Shout out to Morgan. Um, but I chose to go to Bowie um, just to kind of, you know, get away a bit. And I didn't know a soul who was coming from my high school. The only person at um, Bowie State University who was coming from Southside Academy. And for the people that don't know the geography, that was the furthest choice of the three. It was from the furthest oh, choice. Yeah. Shout out to my Towson Times. <laughs> <Robert. laughs> wow. Yes. Um, so when I left, um, I, I, I got to experience other parts of Maryland, um, Prince George's County, right. Washington, D.C. And not only that, I began to travel. All right. And learning that, you know, there's so much more out here that we can do as young black entrepreneurs, not only for ourselves, but our, for our community. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of black uh, activists in Cherry Hill that are actively working um, to empower our youth, um, to give back. Um, and that's some of the things that I'm interested in doing. Um, that's a goal of mine, gotcha. to once I master this process, to go back to my community and do the same. Gotcha. We have Michael Battle from Cherry Hill. Shout out to Michael. He's very big, rich, raised in Cherry Hill. He has a, a great program out there. I like he's, that. Yeah, he's one of the um, people that I idolize gotcha. in, in Cherry Hill, the, the youth programs that he has and things like that. And some of those things are, you know, something that I want to do later on okay. in life. Mr. Battle, we would love that. Yeah, Bridge, come on up, yes, baby. He is awesome. And if you guys have him, he can tell you all the programs that he has for the Please, week. my brother, if you're watching <laughs> this, when this comes out, come see us. We'd love to see you. Nikki just gave you yes, so yes, please. Yes. I like that. I like your name. I like your name. So come see us. Man. Yes, and he's so related, but he's someone I can call. And he's actually um has given my little cousin a job. Nice. And my little cousin um is 16, um, and he's being raised currently by my aunt. And my mom, because his mom passed, who was a very close friend of mine. Sorry, I'm sorry, man. a very close sister to mine. Um, but she passed away when she was 29. So they are raising him. And, you know, it was a simple call. Like, hey, Mike, you know, he needs a job, a summer job. He had a youth program. And it is very successful to this day. Right. Shout I, out to you, my brother. I can't thank him enough for giving him that opportunity. Um, so shout out to Mike. For but sure. yes, all of those things have... Um, made me see that, you know, there's more to life than just, you know, um, satisfaction was just, uh, just being satisfied with the bare minimum. Gotcha. So pretty much that high school into college age. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So if you had any more um, I had her questions. Two questions, but she's been so thorough and right. detailed in her questions that you've already answered. I felt like you kind of answered both of those. Mm -hmm. So I'm fine with moving into rapid fire. Okay. So for all of our first time listeners and viewers, 2024 first episode, episode eight, rapid fire questions is a chance where we just throw quick questions at our guests. We want, don't want you to go too crazy in your thoughts. Try to answer in 30 seconds to a minute. Mm -hmm. If you can, even shorter, mm -hmm. but pretty much this is to show your personality. My questions are a little bit more uh, nicer than Sal's normal, <laughs> so I'm just getting more pre warm And with that being said, <laughs> so kick it off. off. For the kick first question of our rapid fire segment, who is the best male candidate for a woman real estate agent? And what type of man can handle your schedule and workload? Like, is oh. there any specific profession that you feel like kind of fits better for what you do? Um. I don't know if there's specific uh, profession, but in the world of real estate, you know, you always need that partner who's going to support you. There's going to be weekends. There's going to be late nights. You're going to need that partner. Not only is going to promote, market you, hand out your business cards, be there at your open house to provide snacks. You know, you you know the littlest things, believe it or not, can go a long way. Okay. So I don't think it really uh, a specific profession. It's just more so on the person. Okay. All right, so I already told you this was coming. So I, I watched your Instagram over there. Oh, God. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I see you handy with the, with the, uh, with the weapon. Right? <laughs> so my question to you is, okay. with rubber bullets only, okay. what would you hang at the target at the gun range to shoot if you had to get some direct stress off? Oh. Rubber, rubber bullets only, though. No one told me not. <laughs> it's a funny podcast. Oh gosh, who would I hang there? And it could be anything. It could be a person, it could be a picture, 
It could be bullets, anything. It could be that realtor that told you they was going to hit you up and it took the check. It could be whatever. Any moment that's like, I need to get the stress off, and this is my target. Oh, my gosh. Mm, I might have to come back to this. All right, we got to say Only because I don't, I don't really hate anybody. No, hate. No, hate. Love to not love. Yeah, love, love to not love. Thank you for the word. <laughs> bleep, bleep. Don't say that word. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um... We can spend we a spend next question to spin a block. We got a segment called spin a block, so we need to spin a block. I think we need to. As long as I ain't the target. No, no, no. All right, <laughs> so, what Nikki, you do? Nikki Chantel being a big traveler, uh -huh. uh, what's your favorite city to unwind and let your hair down? Oh, wow. Country favorite city where? Oh, gosh. So many that I could even think of. I was in Ocean City. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Uh, uh, shout out to Ocean City. You know, we got to start from the bottom to the top. I have been there a hundred times. It's so, all right. it's secrets. The only club. Oh my God! Know. Secrets used to be the spot, but no. Um, I would say if I had to say somewhere in the U in the United States, I loved um, San Diego. Beautiful I've seen about San Diego. It is so. They said it's kind of like Annapolis with palm trees, right? Because you got the naval community. Yes, there. yes, yes. And I was around in that area, mm. um, but the scenery, the cliffs. Um, you know, it's I went to the zoo. It's so beautiful. And when I tell you, I met some people there. And you know, they were some, you know, white, young, uh, high school kids that were on the beach. And this was like in the middle of the day. And when I tell, when I tell you, they were so carefree. And they were like, look, they were like, we know it's expensive here. But we don't care about anything else but being able to afford to live here so we can enjoy this mm -hmm. lifestyle. That California they, culture. Yes, they don't care about right. shoes, yeah. name brands, clothes, nothing. When I tell you they were on the beach with some beers and some food in the middle of the day yeah. and just laid out and having fun, I loved it. So I would say San Diego. That's a good choice. Yeah. My college roommate actually lives just like maybe like 10 minutes from the Mexican border. Oh, so okay. it's like it's super beautiful. Like when you just like driving, you can see Mexico, but then it's like yeah. 10 minutes from like some of the most beautiful beaches. Yeah, and you know see. what? And I crossed into uh, Mexico. Oh, yeah? Yeah. On purpose? Uh, Tijuana, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, that sounds like a mistake. I crossed into Mexico. No, I Mexico. did. It, it was something like, you know, uh, let me just see how it is over here. I got you. Be careful when y'all crossing over into Mexico. Please, yeah. please, please. Yeah. I was with, I was with, the, um, with my ex-husband, so, okay. you know, it's a difference. Ladies, please do not cross into gotcha. Tijuana by yourself. You ain't even over there, Nah, uh, it. <laughs> sure. sure. Alright, so get into my next rapid fire question. I am going to say, what is your favorite movie to watch with your daughters? Mm, favorite movie to watch with my daughters. And then you got three, and if you can get three of them to watch the same thing, you'd go. But because they all sports watch. Yeah, different yes, ages. Yes, so. yes. So I would say, well, it's gonna be different with my little ones versus okay. my oldest ones. You can give me two. Okay. So with my little ones, we like to watch The Little Rascals. Oh, oh wow. Do you remember that? I almost, I almost pulled that out. Your five-year-old watches The Little Rascals? She watches The Little Rascals. Shout out to the moms getting this nostalgia yes, in these babies. Yes, yes, yes. Throw all the way back. And I can sure. recite that movie probably word for word. I believe <laughs> All I know is I'll five. Yes. <laughs> um, my oldest daughter, oh gosh, she's into so many different things now. Oh my gosh. I would have to say Mean Girls. Okay. So classics. The remake just came out. Okay. But Mean Girls was so hilarious. Like, my daughter and I can watch that over and over again. So. <laughs> but yeah. Gotcha. Right. My next rapid fire question is I guess you can either answer both or one or the other. Biggest turn off on a first date mm -hmm. and or biggest turn off while in a relationship? Okay, I'll answer both. Biggest turn off on a first date. Um, one. Um, you got a list. Oh, I do. Maybe I shouldn't get the whole list. No, just do whatever <laughs> she, whatever she ain't calling person. back, bro. She ain't calling back. Um, one, if you're constantly on your phone. Oh, yeah, that's a. That's um, the last thing you know you want to do is to be on a date and you're looking across the table and you're like. Yeah. Like, because I feel like if, if I'm the man and I see the girl doing it, I feel like she's spilling so all the tea to her friend about what we got going on. Yeah. You can say that for the ride home, don't do it in the moment. You yeah, know what I, mean? I like the one on one attention, yeah. like for that moment, make me the priority. Respect. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you if it's be. not, you know, if it's not your kids, of course, you know, or family, make me the priority. Don't be on your phone the whole time. Gotcha. Um, two, 
um, a deal breaker is bad hygiene, of course. Um, but I feel like at this big age, we should all know. Who's dumb enough to go on a first date with that hygiene? Yes. So it got to check, <laughs> check engine light everywhere. Yes. Get it together. Yes. If it's that bad, you can't fix it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I would say the third thing is, um, I would say a guy that um, is too, I have four things, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. the <laughs> I need mean, to <laughs> get your rocks off. Get your rocks off. You've been wanting to bet this for a while. Uh, yes, let's get it out there um, for my ladies. Um, I would say the third thing is if a guy talks too much about himself, mm -hmm. um, that can be a turn off for me. Um, because granted, you know, it's great that you have a lot of things going on, and more than likely, as a woman, we already know that prior to the date. You know, um, and I'm sure you've probably mentioned it on the phone. But if you continue going on and on about yourself and career, like, let me know the fun stuff about you. Why is everything just work, work, work? Yeah, you know, time. it's a time and a place for everything. And, you know, at that time, you know. Fellas, she's on y'all game. <laughs> taking notes. And number four? Number four. <laughs> fellas, please keep your hands to yourself and your lips. <laughs> I cannot stand a touchy, touchy man. And what I mean by that is someone who is just disrespectful, in a sense. Oh. You know, they got to rub you or, you know, got to accidentally touch your butt or something like that. Or come close enough to your butt where it's like, okay, this is inappropriate. Or, you know, or they want to steal a kiss. Like, you know, it's a time and a place for everything. And a first date, definitely not. Please do not go in for a kiss. I don't know you. You don't know me. <laughs> Let's keep it like that, okay? <laughs> I, I like your list. I like your answers. It's yes. very straightforward. Yes, be um, a gentleman. I'm going to ask, this will be my last rapid fire question. In less than 30 seconds, mm -hmm. if your most vivid fantasy or dream came true, what is it? My most vivid fantasy or dream came true. Yeah. Are you selling the house on the beach in San Diego? Oh my God. Are you uh, watching the Little Rascals? And, uh, <laughs> you know, Tahiti? I don't know. It was, what's the vision? Oh man, my vision would be to, I don't know, let's say retire in Thailand. Um, not a, fun. Yeah, and, and not like a huge house, just, you know, something big enough. And I know my kids would not want to come with me, but if they could, enough for just my family and I right. to have that peace, to just enjoy each other, you know. Um, just to get that experience and actually get out there in like um, in the neighborhood and actually meet people, um, learn the language. Um, I'm just ready to say, if you want to go to Thailand, are you adapting the culture or you bringing our culture to that? I'm doing both. both. I'm doing both. I love your answer because to me it's like well rounded to what you said about yourself this entire time. Growing up in middle class, because I'm, I'm going to be honest, your answer blew me away because coming from Annapolis, I don't really know much about Baltimore and their neighborhoods outside of just like everybody else, the band. So when I hear Cherry Hill, I never heard nobody say, oh, I grew up in a good Cherry Hill. Yeah, I yeah. Know. And then when you say down the hill, I'm like, down the hill in the song? That's what you're talking about. So, so yeah, I had no idea. So to hear you say that you loved hanging out with the people that you knew didn't have as much and playing sports with them and going to school with them. And then when you retire, when you can do anything you want, you want to do the same thing in Thailand. Yep. So I, th I just yep. think that's an amazing answer. And yep. I, and I love we, that. You know, we go to these countries and these islands and we're in the, on the touristy part. You know, we're where, you know, all the Americans go. No, put me in the neighborhoods, you right. know. Make it so I can invest in the areas and, and you know, and meet the people right. and, and the culture, you know, it's more to life just outside of the American culture. I love it. You know? so, so. I yeah, my last rapid fire question. So you just sell a home to a newly married couple. Mm -hmm. uh, you on your way out the door after your big celebration. What is that one piece of advice that you give this married couple on your way out the door? Put God first. Mm -hmm. I can't express that enough because without God in your marriage, there is none. Mm. You know? Um, when you say that, do you look, do you feel like if that's one of your, your needs in a man, does mm -hmm. he have to have the same level of commitment to God that you do or just a, a little bit? Like, what is the, the question? Um, that is a great question. 
I wouldn't say he has to have the same level of commitment to God, but if he can be a God-fearing man and trust God, that's all I need. You don't have to go to church every Sunday, Bible study. I'm not asking for that, you know. I'm just asking that you believe, you know, because without faith, there is no hope in this marriage. And I hope y'all heard that. I hope y'all heard that clearly because the way I took that is you don't have to be best friends with them, but know them. And if you know them, then you're going to act in a certain way morally. You're going to treat people a certain way if you know God's in your life, if you know God exists. You're not going to move as if there's no consequences for evil actions. So I think that was a beautiful answer. And from that moment on, we will move forward to spend the block. Uh -oh. When we spend the block, but I'll, I'll go before you because I said something on an episode, on uh, episode seven for the love of comedy that I gotta spend the block on. So Osteria One Seven Seven, that's located in Main Street, downtown Annapolis. I highlighted this restaurant because it was one of the few places open on Thanksgiving, and they have amazing food. I love the chef there. I love the management there, and I called them by the wrong name last episode, and I'll tell y'all why. I was a little off my stuff. I was a little moving too fast, <laughs> so I couldn't find it. So I want to send a special, special shout out to the manager, Jake, and the owner, who was also the main chef, Arturo Italiano. I just wanted to spend the block on that restaurant. What was that plate you said you had? At uh, Sturry? Yeah. What I had? What I said? You said something crazy. Yeah, it wasn't right. right. Whatever, whatever I said, it was definitely <laughs> not right. I think I was naming Mexican dishes in an Italian restaurant. I was a little off, but I had to spend the block to let y'all know because I'm coming back and I wanted that restaurant to get the right love that they I'll deserve. Be with, I'll be with my brother. So, if you don't want to spend the block on the bullet question, you can keep it moving because you don't have to answer. If nothing what actually came to again? if she could hang up any target, at the gun range, because I seen her at the gun range busting up AK 47s, 9s, for falls, and I was like that kickback kicking your ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was like, you the next, after that one, I see you got the bullet hole in the head. Oh, was, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to be quiet. Oh, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. So, Believe it or not, I wear glasses, and I didn't have my glasses on that day. But okay. My target was right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> As far as we know. As yeah, far as y'all know, look. And everybody made it home with the gun range. I'm the bad. So, you know, fellas who like to be touchy-touchy with your hands, she go, mm -hmm. watch out. That's right. That's okay. Great. So we'll keep it so, moving. Oh, you got one? Yeah, I do have, I, I not so one specifically. Okay. Something. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. So when I think of that target, it's no one in, it specifically um, that I'm thinking of, but, um, I would say that person who represents, let's just say, her, um, if the guy was a rapist, um, a murderer. They um, need robots. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> we'll just keep it a robot for this. Um, pedophiles. Not gonna promote violence, but it's not wrong. <laughs> pedophiles, like, I you know, people who do, you know, the meanest things that you can never, you know, imagine. You know, that's somebody who I would put up there because people like that, you know, I have no mercy for. Yeah, and the worst ones is the ones that you actually trust your mm. children with. I mean, mm. I kind of expect that from strangers if, you know, they just try to kidnap your kid or something. But when you actually allow somebody to babysit your kid, teach your mm. kid, anything, give them a ride, whatever, you know, and you take advantage of that, that's the worst, worst act. Yeah. One of the worst acts. Yeah. For sure. Um, so, and then you want to spend a block on before we keep moving? Nah. All right, so we have a few segments left. Um, if you have, our next segment is called Hidden Gems. Hidden Gems is where we allow our guests to maybe, she's been so thorough, I don't know, she might have another one, but I'm sure she does. So this is just an opportunity to maybe tell somebody, maybe in the realtor side of your business, maybe in something else that you do, maybe in parenting as a mother, maybe in dating as a wife, as an ex-wife, as a woman, as a girlfriend, whatever you want to give a hidden gem on to our viewers, to our listeners, and your followers, mm -hmm. what would the gem be? The gem would be to, which I actually learned from a, a mentor of mine, is to write down your goals. I did not start doing that until two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I can attest that the, I listed about six things. Of the six, so far I've crossed off maybe three. Okay. So you hold yourself accountable. You hold yourself accountable when you write it down. 
and I keep it in my wallet to this day. Mm -hmm. And when someone told me, write down your goals and watch how they start coming to fruition, mm -hmm. I didn't believe it. And it took two people to actually tell me to do that. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I pulled out the index card and I actually wrote them down. Mm -hmm. And I keep it in my wallet to this day. So I can't stress that. Set goals for yourself. In two years, and you already accomplished three of the six. Yes. Congratulations. Yes, by the grace of God. Thank you. Absolutely. So, after Hidden Gems, our next thing to me, I thought that was also inspirational. We have a segment called Inspirational Moment Message to our viewers. Similar to like Hidden Gems, but this is more so like if you were about to leave the stage, if you just did 45 minutes of one of your, um, not networking classes, but one of your workshop, uh, workshop, workshop classes, and that last moment when you just see that little girl or that woman just like dazed and lost mm -hmm. in you, and you, you just know whatever you say next is what they leave it with. Mm -hmm. What they leave it with. What's your inspirational moment message? So like I said, same as the gyms, it could be towards realtor, it could be towards raising a family, it could just be towards something to motivate people. But what is a person that maybe when you were looking two years ago, before you started writing down those goals, that person that told you write down your goals might have been the inspirational mm -hmm. moment message for you. Mm -hmm. So what would be one you would give to the people? I would say, let's see, um, kind of similar to what I already mentioned about writing down your goals, okay. is to dream big. Mm. Dream big and know that nothing is impossible. Mm. Everything is possible when you put in the time, the work, the effort, and you will find yourself in a totally different place than you ever thought you could be. Mm -hmm. Never think that it's impossible, no matter where you've come from, mm -hmm. where you've been. Keep your eyes in front of you and know that life isn't over for you. Mm -hmm. You know, Keep going, no matter how many times you fail. And you will fail as, you, as you're going through the process. But take the steps that you need to take to make it to the finish line and learn from the things that you fail from. That's the biggest thing you can take away from. If you can't, even if you don't make it to the finish line, take away what you've learned and apply it to your next goal. I'm inspired. Yeah. Thank you so much for that inspirational moment. Um, like she said, continue to dream big. Where are the J. Cole, all of my dreamers? Never give up on yourself. Continue to build up your self-spirit and you will see the rest of the world follow behind you. And with that being said, we are at the conclusion of another, another great episode. I want to shout out our studio, Atelier of Baltimore. Shout out to all of my do it for the lovers, our supporters, our subscribers. Make sure you continue to follow us on Spotify, Apple Music. We're also on like 20 other platforms. So anything you want to say to the people before I wrap it up, wrap it up? Um, nah, I mean, it's crazy just... It's still season one, but it kind of feel like season two because we took that long little break for right. the new year. But I'm excited that we continue to get great guests. We got two more women coming up back to back, yes, so yes. y'all gonna be excited to see, um, you know, a different, different look for us this year. Different, Absolutely. different guests. And um, once again, make sure you go to our website, do it for the love.com. You can stream everything from there. If you want to be a guest, go ahead and fill out that job form. I want to send a special shout out to our highlight sponsor, Whole Body Yoga Studio, the beautiful, beautiful Miss Latoya Neal. I also want to shout out to the Autism Support and Awareness Instagram and Facebook page. Continue to inspire families. Believe me, you do more work than you know. You're saving lives on a daily. And with that being said, shout out to the multi-faceted Miss Nikki Cooper, <laughs> a.k.a. Nikki the Realtor, a.k.a. Nikki Chantel, a.k.a. Catch on vacation. <laughs> but, uh, you know the vibes, we outside, do it for the hey, love. the merch is on sale now, too, by the time this uh, episode drops, so go get some. Get that Spitfire merch. Get that Do It For The Love merch. Yep. You see the new tablecloth. We building, baby. This is what it's all about. Episode 8 for the love of building. You know the vibes. And we out.